If you're a supporter of Dash, you're going to go find a way to access Dash and read up on Dash and be engaged. And the same thing goes for different communities. The need for ease, I think, is reduced for the highly passionate early adopter. And we just feel like if things are not made easier, then it we're going to be challenged to kind of get that next wave of adoption. And ultimately, we guide the success of our company by the growth of crypto adoption. I have a fantastically happy uh, luck of being able to talk to uh, Steve Capone, the chief marketing officer of the Voyager investment app. How's it going? Good. Joel. happy to be here. Yeah. So let's give a quick run now. What? What's the elevator pitch for Voyager? What what is it? What does it do? How many flights are we going on this elevator? <laughs> I'm only kidding. Uh, the <laughs> yeah. How about how about ten and a half, ten and a half sure. floors, twelve? Sure, sure. So um, Voyager is a trading platform. Uh, we service retail customers as well as uh, institutions, businesses as well. Um, I think for the sake of today, we'll probably talk a little bit more about our retail business. So we have an accessible trading platform. It's a mobile trading platform. We support uh, well over 20 different coins, include, in, in, including Dash. But we're a little bit different. Notice I did not use the word exchange in there. So we are not a crypto exchange. We approach the market a little bit different than other trading platforms did. And uh, we looked to those kind of legacy of equities markets and uh, uh, traditional markets and how trading is really done and how traders are really serviced. So Voyager is a crypto broker. What we mean by that is we take care of the execution and the liquidity for customers. So our trading platform connects to a variety of different exchanges as well as different all types of liquidity providers. Uh, and that enables us to execute trades across that li that liquidity network for our retail customers that are trading on our app. Ultimately, what that means is um, you get access. Uh, we help you find a, a better price. Um, so if there's any differential across uh, our liquidity providers, we get a, uh, find a better price or we call the overall best execution. I'm sure many folks have had experience, especially in different states in the U.S., of their no longer being able to access a coin on exchange, having to move to another, having their account shut down because of some regulatory change. Um, we mitigate all of that. We act as that intermediary to help you get the access the, that you want. And if one particular exchange isn't supporting something, we have a network effect to complement that. Uh, that enables us to offer some really great pricing. I mentioned uh, uh, great pricing from a uh, execution standpoint, but our model enables us to offer commission-free trading. So you trade with Voyager, you get a better price on the things that you're trading in terms of the actual price you execute at, and we don't charge you any fees. Um, we put all that in a pretty, what we think, easy to use, fast and fun mobile trading application that has some news integrated into it, some more key information about, uh, about the different coins, and try and act as that service agent that helps you be more informed and helps you get a better quality trade. Interesting. So that and seems to be 25. Sorry. What was that again? We may be on floor 25. Sorry. Ah, well, close enough. Don't worry. It depends. It, it could be a slow elevator. I, I know I have one in my building, but it seems like the difference between, for example, trying to go to an airline to book flights and then going to some kind of an airline air travel service that finds the best rates across a whole bunch of different providers. I can only imagine if I'm trying to you know, take a book a flight across the Atlantic and I find, I look at British Airways and then KLM and then Lufthansa. I'm just trying to like ba balance between all the different ones that have an account in each. I'm like, well, what about this one, this one? And it could just be a little bit of a nightmare. And having one spot that just sort of does everything seems to be a big improvement on that. Wouldn't you think? Yeah, absolutely. You can, you, you know, a lot of folks have sort of tried to draw the conclusion and it's not a bad comparison of what kayak is to travel. Um, you guys are doing in crypto. Um, I, I would argue that uh, trading marketplaces or capital markets are even more complex than the inventory of travel. Um, but the fact is, is, you know, seat 6A on a flight from from New York to L.A. is seat 6A, right? And yeah, whether you're buying that directly from the airline or through a reseller marketplace, you know, Expedia or Travelocity or any of these, it's seat 6A. And uh, what a business like Kayak helps folks do is just sit on top of all of that opportunity and access it from one unified place. 
And uh, the crypto market has, uh, you know, evolved very similarly. There's a lot of kind of fragmentation in how you can buy. No one's super interested in kind of minting their specific Dash token or Bitcoin. Uh, they just want to own one or a piece of it. And though they all sort of in a way are, are, are unique, ultimately you want to own the quantity that you want to you own. And we mitigate all that work and aid all of that work uh, to go find maybe the best place to access it. Um, so, so yeah, that's a really great comparison from kind of a fragmented inventory standpoint. And I'll add, it's how pretty much every other financial, public financial marketplace operates. Um, Just not the crypto world, huh? And, and it makes a ton of sense, right? I, I think, um, so our CEO, Steve Ehrlich, he ran the professional trading division at E-Trade. He really grew his, his um, he, he comes from a series of broker and broker dealers, but grew a large portion of his career at E-Trade. And, um, and, you know, he talks a lot about kind of the growth of the, of digital brokerage and online brokerage. If you remember, you know, the old days, um, there's still a lot of paper on Wall Street, but the old days you would literally physically call up your broker or have a meeting with your broker. The exchanges ran by running paper and orders around. Um, it, it makes sense for there to be a lot of fragmentation in an old system. Um, but then eventually the brokers, whether it's E-Trade or, or TD Ameritrade or any of these, started to really become that core interface and partner, or I like to say service agent. I mean, that's really what a broker means to us, um, to help you access those markets. In crypto, it's a new and exciting industry. It, it makes sense that you wouldn't start by all of the legacy rules. Crypto has flipped um, a large part of the financial industry upside down. Um, there are some things from the old world that make sense to apply. There are some things that don't. From our standpoint and how the market is accessed and how traders are served um, is not something that needs to be changed so immensely. Um, we think a broker needs to have a total different mentality to crypto and how you handle these assets um, and how you work with different protocols. But in terms of supporting how trades are executed and offering a, a great experience and trying to trying to reduce all of that fragmentation and all of that work. I mean, we all know what it's like. I call it the 10 tab problem of just, you know, you want to trade and you got a whole bunch of tabs up to access different markets, different information. 10 just, is a light work day for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Exactly. So. So that was a large part of the inspiration for for building Voyager. Yeah. So you think it addresses a bunch of problems that the crypto trading space currently faces? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you know the crypto com you know community or community of communities um, is we were talking about this earlier is is a very passionate community and seemingly has been willing to uh, do all of this fragmented work that I described because you're passionate. And if you're, if you're a supporter of Dash, you're going to go find a way to access Dash and read up on Dash and be engaged. And the same thing goes for different communities. So, so the, the need for ease, I think, is reduced for the highly passionate early adopters. Um, I think the industry is starting to mature. People are realizing that uh, there are multiple approaches to accessing the market, and we all want the next wave of entrants. You know, 2017 brought in a lot of new participants, and it's in everyone's best interest for this marketplace and all the, to get larger and for more people to be exposed to crypto. And we just feel like if things are not made easier and in, in some ways feel uh uh, uh, similar to kind of legacy investing and just how it's done. Um, uh, the thing, you know, there's some good things we learned from that. Then it, we're going to be challenged to kind of get that next wave of adoption. And ultimately, we guide the success of our company by the growth of crypto adoption. Yeah, that reminds me of. Well, I've I've done this before when I've tried to demonstrate using cryptocurrency. I live entirely off of Dash and have for many years, and so it's just very second nature to me at this point. However, when I'm showing people how to send and receive transactions, which is a pretty simple thing on mobile phones where you just say, here, you're going to scan a QR code and send, or you're going to copy and paste an address. It's relatively simple, but people don't really get it because they didn't, it's not intuitive. They didn't come grow up looking at this weird pixelated block as like, this is where money goes. And then they copy and paste this address. They're just, it doesn't look very intuitive. But then I show them something like say dash text, which is an SMS based wallet for Dash, 
where it just says, say, text this to this phone number. They're used to phone numbers from the time they're little, from their parents or their grandparents. They know what a phone number is. They're used to that sequence of digits. And so it just becomes more intuitive. And so I definitely resonate with that um, that idea of sometimes you want to replicate the old systems in a certain way because people are just used to using that. And the average like person interested in cryptocurrency is probably not going to know like all the big exchanges. I'm going to get on Binance and crack it and then arbitrage over to Coinbase and all this kind of stuff. And they're not going to be able to really figure that out on their own unless they're really dedicated to. So, but if there's something like, yeah, I have an E-Trade account. Oh, I have an, uh, <laughs> I have an, uh, now I have a, an account with something that's used that the, someone used to work for E-Trade made. It's like very familiar. Yeah. Yeah. And I look, I've been working and building and marketing emerging technology for my whole career. That's pretty much what I've done. And, and I always operate under the principle of people, at least the majority of people, there's always a contingent that's super interested and engaged and wants to nerd out on anything. And that's great. Uh, and they're usually the people that like work in it. Right. But, um, most people, don't have to understand how it all works. They just want it to work and they just want it to be easy and they want it. You're, you're accessing crypto, whether it's because you're trading it or because you're using it for retail purposes, because that's what you're either looking to make money and grow, get alpha, or you're looking to purchase something or use it for. So that's ultimately what your goal is. Everything in between is just a means to an end. And in the early adoption phase of anything, there's a big focus on those means because we're building and we're trying to make those means better. But I always say to people, um, you don't need to know what the cloud is. Like, you don't need to understand how the cloud is. Uh, I do tell them, like, here's a here's a hint. It's the Internet. But um, but you don't need to know how the cloud works in order to save a photo and have it accessible from somewhere else or by someone else without them needing to sort of download anything, right? So yeah, exactly. it's very, very simple. When you know, Not everyone needs to understand blockchain. Not everyone needs to understand different consensus models. If they want to, there's a lot of information available, but ultimately they want to accomplish what their use case is. And I think that's where this idea of kind of a, a service agent and that model comes in really well. Yeah, that's a, it's definitely a language I'm that the and an, a philosophy that dash really resonates with because i mean first off as of this year dash introduced uh instant send by default which means every single transaction is instantly confirmed and instantly respendable don't have to realize well let's see which you see it now but you gotta wait there's blocks there's confirmations on the blockchain at that point the eyes just glaze over it just yeah. i send it to you, you got it you can resend it and then upcoming very soon uh, the codenamed evolution update to put blockchain usernames as opposed to those long cryptographic addresses. So now instead of having to do the, well, you know, you withdraw from this and you copy paste that and you got to look and wait in the block explorer till it has a few things. Now I can just say your username is the real Capone, right? I send this much, this much dash to the real Capone and then it, it just get it right away. It's just that simple. It works. Yeah, I mean, I think I think what Dash is very aware of and does a really great job of is is just knowing the function of remittance and transfer, right? And and you know, I've been working in fintech for quite a while and been worked with different payments companies, sort of legacy payments companies, or remittance business, and then got into this whole blockchain thing and uh, learned even more about the legacy by learning the new world order, right? But um, I think rooting everything in it. The, the problems that Western Union or PayPal or and Venmo are trying to solve are the same, right? That Satoshi was somewhat thinking about in the white paper all the way through to Dash and, and, new, and new protocols that are dedicated to easy transfer of assets, whether for payment or, 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 or peer-to-peer direct transfer. Um, and rooting things in the language that a traditional remittance business would is super important because once again, the use case doesn't change the technology that enables it changes and it's continuing to center things around that. Um, uh, like with instant, like with easy accessible usernames, which is how, you know, the PayPal's, the Venmo's, the so on and so forth have been approaching that from down is, is super important. And I think, um, I think spot on for dash. Yeah. And I'm sure backend 
on say a PayPal, there's a whole bunch of complex identifiers and things like that and different hard ledgers. And then there's a certain, that's one thing that I think has been a great success of the credit card industry, oddly enough, is that people don't realize that their payment didn't go through right away. Yeah. You swipe that card and they just think it's done. But then you check your, your bank statement and it says, well, you know, pending, it's not, you know, it's not completely settled yet. And so that's a, that's a, one thing that I think the blockchain industry has been very tech forward. And so people see the guts of it. They see the inner workings and the gears more than they will have to eventually. But one thing that's radically different with cryptocurrency is your keys, your crypto, not your keys, not your crypto to where you, if the cryptocurrency is working pretty much as advertised, you should not be able to reverse transactions. You should mm -hmm. send them and they're completely done. And that provides some, security risks too because now if you lose it it's gone and that's why a lot of exchanges have had hacks have had large hacks hard problems like that um and so that's why a lot of a lot of people i know go through some extra hoops because they want to hold custody of their own coins they want to hold their own private keys and they they want to barely trust a little bit to an exchange at a time because of what they see that is a massive honeypot for hackers and they just don't want to be um, victimized by that. Uh, do you guys have any kind of solutions or thoughts of mitigating that coming up? Yeah, it's it's something we think a lot about. And you touched on, you know, three things. And there are three things that, it's, you know, going back to this conversation about the evolution of crypto and, and the next wave of adoption, you touched on uh, clearing, settling, and custody, right? Those are three things that the average person should not need to know about. Uh, of course, if you're very passionate about crypto, you start to learn about self-custody and the concept of that. And, uh, um, uh, but those are three things that, that, you know, the sort of everyday or mainstream person doesn't need to know about. But what they do need to know about is, um, is it mine? How, how quickly can I own it or access it? And how quickly can I send it somewhere else? Right? Like these, this is just how people talk. Right? So, so anyway, the, I, I think it's, you know, sort of interesting to think about that in the context of what we were just discussing, but Voyager since day one, um, and as a, you know, an upstart company, a, a growth stage company, we can't build everything at once, but we've had a pretty intentional roadmap. Um, and have shared a lot about our plans for this to do some things now and more and more will happen in the future. We've always believed in this kind of this idea of custody your way. We can't build everything right at once, but let me shed some light into what we do today and, and, and how that will continue to evolve. Currently, uh, just like a majority of liquidity providers like exchanges, Voyager offers a hosted custody model. Um, uh, that means we hold on to the keys that enables us to uh, trade with a lot of efficiency. There's a good reason why trading platforms do that, right? It's not because they yeah, of course. want to. There are some bad actors at times and how and, and we have seen market ma manipulation by sort of truly maintaining custody. But for the most part, and generally speaking, it's done um, just from a model and technology standpoint. And, and it made sense for sort of ease of access. That's how we started as well. Um, uh, that being said, we differ in a, in, in a couple different ways. Because Voyager has this liquidity network, um, we maintain a very, very minimal amount of assets uh, with our exchange partners to sort of be able to fill orders. Um, we uh, an announced we're one of the earliest, um, I think our, maybe the first um, uh, crypto trading platform to partner with Ledger and Ledger Vault. So mm -hmm. when you have your assets custodied with Voyager, um, uh, we have other cold storage partners as well, so Ledger doesn't support every single one, but they're switching more on, you know, every day or month. Um, we that same hardware technology that many have been uh, comfortable with, uh, Ledger's uh, Ledger's cold storage solution. Um, they have an institutional grade version of that, and we use that for our assets. We also work with other common uh, custodial partners, reputable ones like BitGo, for example. Um, so we feel, and we've received a lot of great feedback on this, and that makes our traders feel really comfortable. Um, all of that being said, custody your way. Uh, we announced a partnership, uh, which grew into a bit of a romance and then became an ultimate merger and acquisition with the ethos team from last year through to this year. 
And it's been one of the most instrumental and exciting things for our business. And it really helped us accelerate things that we wanted to do early on and just couldn't build, you know, everything at once. Uh, Ethos had a very similar vision and they believed in offering easy accessible trading and also self custody. We believed in that too. We just kind of started building the trading stuff quicker and they started building the self custody stuff quicker. Um, so what we announced, and this is coming um, early next year, there's a lot of work to be done. Is we're integrating full self custody into the Voyager trading application using Ethos's technology. You will be able to maintain keys to your coins. Um, the Ethos token will play an important role in that uh, you pay minimal fees. Uh, uh, we will have a little bit of a fee model introduced here, even though we are a commission free provider today for, for our trading, um, uh, to be able to trade directly from self custody. So this goes back to reducing that friction of I need to transfer from this preferred custody place onto this trading platform and then back over here, uh, one unified experience where you can maintain keys to your coins as well as trade directly from one place uh, within with one partner in one application. Yeah, that sounds almost like magic to a lot of traders. If you think about it, it's that. Uh, everyone has in the back of their head that, oh, this is on exchange. Someone else holds this. Something happens. They could take a haircut off the top. They could go under. They could get hacked. But it's like what you're saying. So what you're saying is you're holding on to your own keys, your own money, and you still get to trade on the on the platform. Yeah. And and, you know, I won't sort of go down a rabbit hole of the architecture of it, mm -hmm. but the fee structure and the economics are better than if you needed to sort of do a transfer here, a transfer there, a transfer back over here, right? So, so it saves you time and saves you kind of what I would call like operational money. Um, so, so yeah, I will say there, are, you know, we talk to a lot of different crypto traders and some of them, you know, there is a, a strong faction of no keys, no coins. And we believe in the sort of the ethos, no pun intended of crypto and, and mm. working to support that. Um, but some folks say, you know, I, I don't really want to deal with keys, you know, and I think the next wave of, of crypto adoption, we may see more and more of that. I just want to know funds are safe, right? So then who we work with from a, a custodial standpoint in terms of where we host custody of our assets gives them a lot of ease as well. Okay. Well, fantastic. So where could people find more about how to start using Voyager then? Yeah. So, uh, you can we have a live ios application android is coming in just under two months it's the thing we get asked about more than anything else so i'll just let everybody know it's coming very 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 soon um but if you search in the ios app store if you just search for voyager or invest voyager you can find us there that's the best way to access our business and product um for those uh, that are just interested in learning more before trying uh trying the application or on android go to investvoyager.com uh, please sign up on the mailing list there. We have a live promotion right now where we're giving away $25 worth of Bitcoin if you just sign up ahead of time before opening your account. So even if and even with Android coming down the road, we, we will honor that. Um, and then uh, we always love some Twitter love from Crypto Twitter. Um, so uh, if you don't get to us on investvoyager.com and find our social there, uh, at investvoyager is our Twitter. Okay, and fantastic. I'm, uh, I'm at S. Capone. At S. Capone, not the real Capone. I'm sorry, I messed that up in the Dash Evolution <laughs> hypothetical there. Yeah, no, no. The, there, There is another crypto Capone on Twitter who's a technical analyst, and he has really great stuff, and I, I always get really jealous that he nabbed that before I did. Well, hey, S. Capone sounds great to me. Oh, thanks again <laughs> for chatting, and I hope you have a good one. All right, thanks so much, Joel. Thanks, everybody. Oh, <laughs>